What a great calendar year it's been. Talk us through it. A great calendar year, yeah, fantastic. From I remember going up to see Steve Claridge before the Fulham game. Before the Fulham game, we were one to nine to get relegated, and um, I think I think Steve Claridge probably had some at, at that price. <laughs> but I knew we, we had it in us. You know, I knew those first sort of ten or eleven games, we weren't far off. You know, we we, we just weren't. And you you've got to believe in this league. You can see it this year with Burnley. You know, they've got a few results. Yeah. And they're starting to, well, oh, hold on, we deserve to be here. You know, we're not, um, we're, we're all right. You know, we can do this. And, and that happened to us last season. And the belief grows. Yeah. And then, obviously, Tony came in and galvanised everybody around, you know, I think, you know, his style fitted with our players. And, and he did a great job. You know, the players did a great job. Yeah. So we were excited on the break. The whole place was, you know, lifted yeah. and... It was amazing. And then that Liverpool game where the first game where I was really relaxed. I remember going three down and <laughs> sitting next to you. I was on my phone thinking, no, it's not great, is it? But I've got to play of the year tomorrow and <laughs> it's going to be a bit flat, you know, because we've just got, we've got Dean 3 nil by Liverpool. And then Damo loses track of where he was, tries to cross it. and <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he'll love you for that. Delaney deflected. One back. And when, when Yala breaks past Ben Johnson, it's, it's just... Exciting. And the place was electric. Yeah. Gale, it's 3-2! So, yeah, the season was great. Fantastic year for everybody. But, like I said to you before, I don't look back, really. It's pointless. You know, it's gone, it's done. Mm. Enjoy it, celebrate <clears> it, <throat> and, then, and then try and move on. And since then, you know, things haven't gone so well. You know, obviously with Tony going just before the start of the season, causes an upheaval. Yeah. Um, probably didn't really get the right fit, probably with Neil. Got to take it on the chin for that one. Just expl you know. explain that, Steve, because obviously we can't ignore that. It's recently happened. Was the time right for Neil to leave? And why, if so? Look, history will judge that. You know, we're one game into him not being here. You know, he's... I know people say it, I don't say it lightly, Neil is a very, very nice guy, really nice guy. And um, I would have loved him to have been a success. In the maelstrom that, that was going on then, I probably wanted to get someone in too much. I just, I felt that what we had here, we could just keep going. Yeah. And I didn't see anybody out there at the time that I wanted to make a three or four year commitment to. And Neil was prepared to come in and do it you know, on a slightly shorter term basis and help out. And it, it felt the right thing to do. And, 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 you know, I don't think we're massively behind mm -hmm. where, where we should be. Um, but I just think that we were drifting away again from what we're good at. Yeah. And I don't think it's a time to change things, personally. We tried to play a different formation at Southampton and I felt we looked a bit lost at sea at times and mm. the crowd went flat. And, it's difficult then to dig yourself out of that. Yeah. What type of manager are we looking for, Steve? That's what people... Look, you can set all these criteria and it kind of boxes you in. We're looking for the right man for the job. Um, and ideally, you want somebody with experience of the league. And, mm -hmm. um, because of why? Really importantly, can block out the noise. You know, the, the, the quality that Tony had is Tony really doesn't care what anybody thinks he wants to win football matches. Mm. And he does, he's single-minded about the things that he needs to do with the group of people he's got to win football matches and to get success, which is for us at the moment staying in this division. You know, you see so many foreign owners, they come and buy an, an English club <clears throat> and they run the club. But for you, someone who's grown up watching the team, supported the team from the terraces, bought season ticket and now run the club. Is it a different feel for you? Because it's your club. With the other guys, they buy a business. Yeah, I think so. I don't, I don't just roll the dice, you know. Oh, let's just do that then. You know, I, I, I really agonise over everything that we mm -hmm. do. Chat to Stephen about things endlessly, you know, try and work out the, the best thing to do. Because we've got to make more decisions, right ones than, than the rest of them, to catch up. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so we've got to kind of rely on them having a bit more of, oh, let's just try that, let's just try that, and, and us 
being a bit more methodical and trying to make the right decisions. So, are the emotional decisions? No. No, I mean I'm. I'm pretty tough nut with things like that. Mm. Um, I think you make decisions in football to create emotions. Like right now, I think we need a lift, a little bit of a lift. Mm. You know, we need we need something just to lift the place. There's a real, I can sense it around the ground and around the fans, this sense that we might lose something that we've, that we've got. And the Premier League is such a fantastic place to be that, that we all want to stay there. So, you know, that's, that's the aim, that's the priority. And, and it's not emotion that drives the decisions to get us there, but it's tapping into those emotions to make sure you get the sense of how people feel mm. and, and what's needed to make you make the right decision. But the decision should be as analytical as you could possibly make it and not knee-jerk. Yeah. What can I say? Steve Parrish, thank you for your time. Always a pleasure, mate. <laughs>